Autoplay Media Studio contains a variety of string functions which allow you to manipulate strings in some different ways. We're just going to take a few here and take a look at them. As always, it's up to you to go through them one by one and find out what they all do. Okay, so basically let's set up a string here. Let's say name equals Alexander and let's say city equals uh, how about Toronto, Canada. Okay, so we've got some strings set up here, and now we can go about manipulating them. One common way of manipulating strings programmatically is to concatenate them, and that means to attach them. In this case, we've got a name and a city, so perhaps if we could attach those two together. So let's go ahead and try out a string concatenate function. So we're going to right click and we're going to select Add Action from the menu and we're going to choose String Concat, it says, but that's actually short for concatenate and then we're going to choose Next. Now in this resulting dialog box here it gives us some options to choose our Start String, our End String, and our Result String. So in this case our Start String is going to be our name our end string, of course, is going to be our city. But additionally here, we want to go ahead and concatenate with something in between. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our concatenation operator uh, on the name line here, and we're going to use two dots to symbolize that. So two dots is your concatenation operator, and we're going to type that and then a couple of quotation marks. And in between the quotation marks, we can type anything we want, and that will be attached between name and city. So let's go ahead and type in here is from space and our resulting string is going to be stored in this result variable. So in other words it's going to take our name variable, it's going to attach it to the string is from and then it's going to attach that to the variable city and it's going to store it in a variable named result. So let's go ahead and press finish and then just to test this we're going to set up our dialog message as always okay and I'm going to go back in here I'm just going to leave the title blank and we'll go ahead and display the value of our result variable so I'm going to press F5 to preview this and as you can see it worked like we planned it concatenated um, the strings together in the exact way that we asked it to. So in other words, it took our name, it put the string that we typed in there is from after the name, and then it attached the location to the end of that. So I'm going to press OK and then exit from the preview screen and come back and just review this real quick. So we have a name and we have a city. And what we did was we concatenated them together and while we were concatenating them we actually inserted an additional string here is from that we concatenated onto the end of the first variable name. Okay, so that's one manipulation of strings. That's a string concatenate action. Let's take a look at another one. I'm going to go ahead and leave the dialog message action in there, but I'm going to get rid of this string concatenate action. So let's go ahead and try a string find function. So we're going to right click and select add action, and then we're going to select from the string category string find. Then we're going to press next. And basically what this action does is it looks for a string inside of another string and then it returns a numerical value to tell you uh, the first position of where it found the first instance of that search string. Um, and it's also going to return a minus one if it couldn't find it. So for example if we set up our search string here as being our city and then we search for the pattern Toronto and we will select start at character 1 and we're going to leave it on case 7 instead of false although obviously here you can set it to true if you would like your search to be case sensitive and we're going to leave the default name for the variable here of result okay so it's going to search inside the city um, variable for the string Toronto 
and then it's going to tell us where it is if it can find it. So let's press finish and then we'll go ahead and preview this by pressing F5 and we should see a 1. And there it is because in our city string the word Toronto is the first one. So let's press OK and we're going to close this window again. Now in our city string if we inserted a couple characters prior to the Toronto uh, for example let's say if we had a little heading in here city with a colon now if we run this again you'll notice that the number now changes to seven because we've inserted six characters before the word Toronto so it's basically finding the location of the word Toronto now let's try searching for a string that we know is not in our city variable here I'm just going to go ahead and return this to the original value and see what happens then so I'm going to double click on that action to bring back up the properties dialog and I'm going to go ahead and search for a different city name in this case New York and I'm going to press OK now when I press F5 to preview we should see a minus one because we know that the word New York was not in our city string and there you go so if it doesn't find any instances of your pattern string within your search string it's going to give you a minus one okay so that's the string find action I'm sure if you play around with that a little bit you can uh, work out the finer points fairly quickly so let's go ahead and remove that action and we'll look at one final string action here um, how about a string upper okay so in this case here we've got our name and our city variable and we've got our test display what we're going to do is we're going to use a string upper action to change these letters to uppercase so we're going to right click select add action and from the string category I'm going to scroll down and choose the string upper function okay and press next basically what it's looking for here is the name of a string or a string in this case we're going to give it the name of a string so the variable names oops the variable named name and it will change that to all uppercase letters and then store the result in a variable named result so I'm going to press finish and then I'm going to press F5 to preview and as you can see it's taking the um, string that we've typed in Alexander and it's converted it to all uppercase characters and displayed it in our dialog so that's a brief overview of string functions and how you can work with them as you can see they're really quick and easy to work with extremely powerful and you can apply them to a variety of scenarios these are ideal for dynamic applications for example that interact with databases or um, the uh, one of the various SQLite plugins or something like that for uh, the product and basically the sky's the limit with string manipulation you can combine these actions in a variety of ways to create quite advanced functionality so I encourage everybody to go through them one by one and experiment a little bit